Hello and welcome to this video in which we look at hydrostatic pressure on a wall. And in particular, our goal here is to look at the hydrostatic pressure, which is a distributed force, and find an equivalent concentrated force. So to begin with, we need to know a little bit about hydrostatic pressure. Um, the idea is that water pressure, which is hydrostatic pressure, increases linearly with depth. And so the pressure as a function of depth, if I call h here depth, so I would start at a depth of 0, go down to a depth of 24 feet. Uh, so we might have the pressure as a function of h is what we call gamma times h. Again, h is the depth. Gamma is the specific weight of the liquid. which in this case for water, it's uh, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Okay. And um, so uh, the units on the specific weight are pounds per cubic foot. I'm multiplying by feet in H. So P is a pressure. It's uh, pounds per square foot. Okay. Now, to actually look at this in terms of a force, I would like to be able to talk about it in terms of pounds per feet, so it would be a distributed force. So to do that, let's think of looking at a one foot wide slice. So coming out of the, out of the picture, out of the screen towards you, think of me having uh, created a slice of wall one foot thick coming out of the screen, and then it's got this depth of water, 24 feet, um, for a width of one foot. Okay, so if I do that, then I can get what I might call, say, a load force. And um, this would be P of H times my width of uh, my slice, one foot. And this guy will have the units that I want in terms of pounds per foot. Okay. So again, in order for this to make sense with the units, I have to think of a one foot slice of this wall. And I'm looking at a one foot slice of the water behind the wall and so on. Okay, now what we want to get here, we know this water is applying force against the wall and that it's a distributed force as the water gets deeper, the force gets larger. What we want to be able to find is an equivalent force a point or concentrated force that we might have a magnitude F and then it's applied at a particular point on the wall which um, for reasons that may or may not become clear later I'll call H bar. Okay, So I need to know what this equivalent force is and I need to know the depth at which it would be applied in order to be um, equivalent to this distributed force. Okay, so um, one way to think about this is to just think about the force, or, or think about this water, this distributed force as a triangle, okay, which I've drawn badly here. And so the magnitude is just going to be the area of the triangle. Okay, so in this case it would be one half times um, the base, which is 1497.6 pounds per foot, times the height, which is 24 feet. Okay, so all I've done here is I've taken this triangle and uh, found its area, and that area then represents the equivalent force. And when I multiply this guy out, I get uh, 17,971.2 pounds. Okay, I've actually taken that out to much more precision than most problems would allow, but or would require. But there it is. And it's a well-known fact. And when and when a professor says it's a well-known fact, what they really mean is that there's at least one book somewhere where you can find this. That if I have a triangle the equivalent point of application, this guy here, 
is one-third of the way up the triangle. So basically, um, one-third of the way up the triangle means that I'm eight feet from the bottom, or 16 feet from the water surface. So either of those would tell me what h, what h bar is. Okay, now suppose you don't have access to the book that has this well-known fact in it, or um, you might want to know how to do this for general shapes instead of triangles. Well, the way we would do that is with integrals. So if you don't want to know anything about integrals, now's the time to, to bail, to leave. But if you want to see how this is done with integrals, that's what we'll do next. So uh, to do this with integrals, I'm going to do the following. I, I still have my, my diagram here that shows the wall, the water, and so on. But what I've done is I've added a set of axes. So I've got an h-axis, which goes down. So the deeper it is, um, uh, or, or yeah, the uh, larger h is, the deeper the water is. And then I've drawn on this axis a weight function, which is weight as a function of h. So that's how I've got this. And then I take this whole thing, rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise, and it looks like this. I have h, so this is my depth increasing. Uh, this is the weight function as a function of depth. And this basically is the line that gives me um, that weight. And um, the slope of the line is uh, 62.4 feet or pounds per feet squared. And h is, again, well, the, the, the line itself is actually 62.4 pounds per square foot times h. Okay, so um, what I want to do is use calculus to find the things I need to know. Uh, again, I want the total magnitude, and again, the total magnitude is the area under this waveform. Now, for a triangle, that's easy. If this waveform, or, or I'm sorry, this function, uh, wh, if that were a more complicated function, then that would not be easy. So, um, the area under the triangle is going to be the integral from 0 to 24 feet of 62.4 pounds per foot squared times h dh. And if I work this out, then I get um, uh, 62.4 pounds per foot squared divided by 2. That's because this guy out here is a, just a constant with respect to h then I would have h squared evaluated at 0, or I'm sorry, evaluated at an upper limit of 24 feet and a lower limit of 0. And when I work this out, I get this is 17,971.2 pounds, which miraculously is the same value as we had uh, when we just looked at the area of the triangle. Okay, let's see if we can find h bar. And to do this, I'm going to create a whole new uh, workspace. So uh, we have h bar. The formula for finding this is the integral from 0 to 24 feet of h times w of h dh over the integral from 0 to 24 feet of w of h dh. And we've already computed what this is. In our previous um, example, we found that this is uh, 17,971.2 pounds. Okay, so all we need to do is evaluate this top integral. Okay, so let's evaluate this top integral. Okay, uh, w of h, well, let's, uh, we have h times 62.4 feet, or I'm sorry, pounds per square foot times h dh. So I can take out this constant, so I have 62.4 pounds per square foot 
times the integral from 0 to 24 of h squared dh. Okay, and when I work this, um, when I work this integral, I will get h cubed over 3 evaluated at 0 and 24 feet. Evaluating this at 0 gives nothing, so I'm just going to have uh, this whole th uh, this value plugged in for h. So then, uh, combining this, I get 62.4 pounds per square foot times uh, one third times 24 feet cubed. And when I work this whole thing out, I get uh, this is 287,000. 539.2 uh, foot-pounds. Sorry, that looks like an R hat, so foot-pounds. Okay, so I know um, this top integral now is this. I know the bottom integral. So I can say that h-bar is equal to this guy divided by this guy. And when I actually perform that calculation, I won't write it out, um, I get that h-bar is exactly 16 feet. And so if I go back to my picture, that says that at 16 feet, which I guess is about here, um, 16 feet from the top, or 8 feet from the bottom, is where the equivalent force would be applied. So. Um, That pretty much does it. Uh, we found the uh, equivalent force, and we found the force, or the location where it would be applied. We've done it just using simple geometry of triangles, and then we've also done it using integrals. The advantage of using integrals is that this generalizes to much more complex uh, W of H functions. So um, I can come up with really crazy stuff and still make this work. So, uh, hopefully you found this helpful, and that concludes this video.